Hello class, welcome to today's lesson, which is 2.6, Prime Trinomials and Complete Factorization. So let's start. We have two concepts to understand today. So let's start with prime trinomials. What is a prime trinomial? Okay, let's see. Let's suppose I give you the following trinomial. 2x to the square plus 3x plus 4. And I give you the instruction to factorize this trinomial. Uh, first, you could make sure uh, that it's a perfect square trinomial and it's not going to work out, right? Because even though this is, in fact, the square of a number, in this case, the number 2, 2 to the square is 4, this other term is not the square of anything, at least not with an integer, right? We cannot find a coefficient, which is an integer. I'm going to represent it by a and some variables such that to the square will give me 2x squared, okay? So this is not a perfect square trinomial. So we cannot factorize it as a perfect square trinomial. What is the other technique that we could use? Well, the general technique, right, which is trying to find two binomials, and I'm going to represent their terms in this way. First term in here, first term of the second binomial, second term of the first binomial and second term of the second binomial. And the other technique is trying to find two numbers in here, the yellow ones, I'm going to call them the yellow ones, such that multiplied together will give you 2x squared, and then two blue ones that will multiply together will give you 4, but also we need that the product of these two plus, plus, the product of these two should give you 3x. And that's not always possible. In this case, if you try to find any combination of, of uh, possibilities, let me raise this, these lines. If you try to, to factorize this trinomial in this way, for example, you might think, okay, 2x and x, their multiplication give me 2x squared, find uh, 1 plus 1 and plus 4, their multiplication of plus 1 of, uh, and plus 4 will, will give me plus 4. But uh, the product of these two plus the product of these two will not give me 3x. And any other combination that you may come up with, for example, 2x, x plus 2 plus 2, okay, this is not going to work. And any other possible combination with, with of the signs and the coefficients, you will not be able to factorize this trinomial, at least using integers. Okay, remember we're we are only using integers as coefficients and as constants. Okay, so using only integers, we cannot factorize this specific trinomial. So we're gonna call them by by a specific name. We're gonna call them prime trinomials. This is a prime trinomial because it cannot factorize using only integers. That is a definition. Okay, so that is that is the concept of prime trinomials. Be aware that most of the trinomials in algebra, I don't know, if, you're, if, if I start to write whatever comes to my mind, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking, I'm just writing trinomials at random, okay? I'm not thinking about this. I'm just writing down stuff, numbers, at complete random. Most of these things, most of, uh, most of the trinomials in algebra will be prime trinomials, okay? Because only under special conditions will uh, trinomials of the second degree, like all of these, be able to be factorized like uh, nicely in the way that we have, we have been doing them. So be aware of that. Okay, so that is the concept of prime trinomials and there is nothing else to be said about it. Now let's go to the other concept, the concept of complete factorization. What is a complete factorization? Let's see. Let's erase all of this first.
And now let's go over complete factorization. Okay, what is complete factorization? Let me give you three examples. The first example, I'm going to start by saying that we have this trinomial, okay, which is a trinomial of the second degree because the x is elevated to the, our variable is elevated to the square. That's why it's called a trinomial of second degree. And I tell you one more time, please factorize this thing. Okay, fine. If you do this, if you try to go like before, like, okay, two numbers, one here and one in here, that should give me 2x squared. Uh, let's go with 2x and let's go with x. Okay, that's that would be correct, right? Okay, and now two numbers, one here and one here, that multiplied together will give me 6. What could those numbers possibly be? Think a little. I mean, they, they, they could be 1 and 6, or 2 and 3, or 3 and 2, or 6 and 1. You know, the, the, the order also matters. It's not the same having 1 in here and 6 in here, plus 1 and plus 6. This is not the same as having plus 6 and plus 1, okay? You need to be aware of that. Okay, so which one works? It seems as though this one, this factorization works nice, okay? Why? Let's, let's try to investigate why. Okay, first of all, does the mod... Does the multiplication of these two numbers give me this one? Yes, that's right. Does the multiplication of these two numbers give me plus 6? Yes, that's true. And also, the product of these two plus the product of these two plus also is giving me 8x, right? Make sure about that. It's very simple to see. So this is, in fact, a factorization of my trinomial. Okay? This is a perfectly good factorization. I have completed the task, which is which was to factorize this trinomial. And I'm, I may be like, okay, I, you know, that's it. I wash my hands. I'm done. And that's okay. There is nothing wrong about, about leaving it like this. Okay? If the instruction was factorize this trinomial, and you do this, you're actually fulfilling or satisfying the requirements. Now, this is not what we know as a complete factorization. Even though it is a factorization, and it's a perfect factorization, it is not complete. That is the adjective here. It is not complete. Why not? Because if you observe this, tri this binomial in here, can be further factorized, you see? Because you have two terms, they share a common factor, which is two, and this binomial can be factorized as two that multiplies x plus three. Can you see? This binomial is the same as this. So if I factorize it and I, and I come up with this, and then I add, obviously, the remaining factor, which, which was x plus 1. Now, this is what we understand as a complete factorization. Okay, this is a complete factorization. And this is just, well, just a factorization. There is no other name for it. Or incomplete factorization. You may, you may call it that way, incomplete factorization. But it is, it is a factorization all, all the same. So in algebra, we try. We try to come to the complete factorization as, as much as we can. Okay, And that's the idea behind complete factorization. When you are given uh, any expression, any, any polynomial, whatever, try to get to the complete factorization. That is the idea. Now, a good step to take a first, uh, a good first step to take in order to achieve complete factorizations is this. Like some of you have been doing before, because I've been noticing that, that some of you already know how to do this. 
which is very good. Uh, the first thing you have to, to try is get the, the greatest common factor of, the, of all the terms. The greatest common factor. In this case, if you look at all the terms, you know right away that the greatest common factor, the GCF, is equal to 2. So let's, let's first factorize all of this by using the GCF. And I'm going to get the following. This is equal to 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 3, right? And then once you, once you do that, you now try to factorize the remaining expression, which is here, okay? So you get 2, and then you try to factorize this, and you're going to you're gonna be ending up with x plus 1 times x plus 3. You see? That's how you do it. So basically, in order to achieve a complete factorization, first try to factorize using the greatest common factor and then factorize the, re the remaining expression. Let's see another example. Example number two. Let's write six x to the cube minus 9x to the square minus 6x. So we have a trinomial. This is a trinomial of third degree, okay, because of because of the variable being raised to the to the third exponent. And so we want to factorize it. But we want to factorize it completely. So let's start. First, try to see whether these guys have a greatest common factor. Do they? Yeah, right? It's going to be 3 because that's the greatest common factor of the coefficients. 6, 9, and 6. That's 3. And the greatest common factor for the variables will be x. So I'm going to factorize my trinomial first using the GCF. So I'm going to get 3x that multiplies 2x squared, because this times this will give me this, right? Minus 3x, because this times this will give me this. And finally, minus 2. So that's the first, the first step to take. And now that I've done that, I try to factorize this, this trinomial which in this case is a, a trinomial of the second degree. If you want, you can like isolate it and go to another place in, in another part of the notebook or another sheet of paper or whatever. Like, like make a pause right here. You can make a pause. Just now just take this trinomial, bring it somewhere else. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to concentrate only in solving this problem now. And once I solve it, I go back here. So let's see if we can factorize this thing. I open up my potential binomials and two numbers or two, two terms that multiply together should give me this. Well, there's only one possibility. 2x squared, I'm sorry, 2x and x. You know, when these, when these integers are small, the possibilities reduce and it's very simple to factorize, right? And two numbers that multiply together should give me minus 2. Well, I can opt for minus 1 and plus 2, right? That's one possibility. Now, let's see if this factorization works. Okay. How can I know that? Well, the multiplication of these two guys plus the multiplication of these two shall give me minus 3x. Does that work? No. No, right? Because 2x times 2, that's 4x. And the multiplication of these two, that's going to be minus x. So 4x and minus x, when I add this and this together, it's not going to give you minus 3x. Okay, so this one doesn't work. Uh, well, okay, never mind. What about changing the order of the signs? What if I put plus in here and minus in here? If you check it, it's going to work. 
okay I'm not gonna do it okay you, you can see that right away so this is in fact the factorization of this trinomial and once I finished with this thing I go back to my original problem which is gonna be 3x that multiplies all of this which is all of this right so I just paste it I copy paste And this is the complete factorization. Now, how do I know that, I, that I'm finished? You look at all, the, at all your factors. You look at this, one factor, another factor, another factor, and you realize that they can no longer be factorized anymore. You see? You, you, you inspect them, and you go like, no, 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 none of them can be further factorized, so I'm done. This is a complete factorization. Okay, one last example. Let's write down number three. And let's write 27, eight to the six, minus eight, a to the three, b to the three. Okay, so this is a difference, a difference of two terms and it looks like a difference of cubes right okay but before we try to factorize it as a difference of cubes let's try to do the same thing as before let's try to first use the GCF in order to factorize partially this whole thing okay so look at these two terms this one and this one do they share a common factor yeah right it's gonna be 8 to the 3 that's going to be the greatest common factor between this term and this term. So let's factorize partially using such common, such common factor. So I go like 8 to the cube. That multiplies 27 8 to the cube minus 8b to the cube. Make sure that this is the, the correct factorization by using the GCF. Make sure that this times this is this, and this times this is this. Okay, good. And now, we continue, right? I, now, I'm going to try to factorize this thing. It looks like a difference of cubes. I try to make sure first. So, I, I'm going to isolate the problem. I'm going to go over here. Is this a difference of cubes? Let's see. Uh, 27a to the cube is the cube of 3a, right? It's very simple to see. And this thing is a cube of 2b. So this is, in fact, a difference of cubes. And therefore, it can be factorized uh, using the formula, right? So this, all of this, will be equal to 3a minus 2b. That multiplies the square of my first number, which is 9a squared, plus... The multiplication of both of them, which is going to be 6ab plus the square of this, which is 4b squared. So this is the factorization of this. And once I'm, once I'm done with this uh, factorization, I go back to my original problem and I write the final solution. All of this is the same as all of this. And I just paste the solution. Like so. And now I'm sure that this is a complete factorization. Okay, perfect. So that's how this works, guys. Complete factorization. Sometimes it's not that simple to, to uh, make sure that you have completely factorized something. But in, in most cases, it is. In most cases, it's rather simple to see or rather obvious. In some cases, though, it's much more complicated. So that's it, guys. Let's work on the workbook.
and thanks so much.